Hello everybody, especially the parents out there who are looking to get some information regarding whether or not their adolescent needs some emotional support these days. If you look at the Centers for Disease Control statistics, you will notice that one in five kids, that's 20%, are indeed having some major difficulties emotionally speaking, mainly with depression and anxiety as a result of the COVID mandates. It is not healthy for them to not be with their friends staying at home all day with you parents, although, well, I guess there's mixed feelings on that particular situation all the way around, but they are meant to be with their friends, especially in the teen and college years. We know that masks are not very healthy for people. They breed all kinds of mold and bacteria for anyone who actually understands the breeding grounds are from cold, damp areas. Not a good thing, regardless of what the so-called official mandates are on these things. It's totally ridiculous if you actually think with your brain. Not to mention the fact that their younger kids are not developing speech because they cannot see the facial expressions of those behind their mask. This is a really big problem, nor can they actually understand what the facial expressions mean and who to trust and not trust. So this is a major problem for the younger kids coming up. But what we're interested in here is whether or not your kid is having some major depression or anxiety issues. And I'm going to go down some of the symptoms that you can look at to see if this is happening. I guess the first and most important indicator is if your child is coming to you and telling you they're having a really hard time. They may not have the words to explain to you what's truly going on, but if they're talking about being worried about things in the future, if they're talking about always feeling anxious, their heart is pounding, that they feel like they're gonna die, these are anxiety attacks, people. They're not gonna die from them, but it's really uncomfortable and it's not good for their cortisol to be running all the time in this way. It can cause health problems over the long haul, so it's definitely something that you wanna get taken care of. And I'm happy to tell you that with the world of hypnotism, it's really easy to do it, no medications involved. In fact, I would prefer my clients not be on medications at all, because what we're going to do is figure out what was the first significant event that traumatized them and then clear it all up up to now. There's other things that we do along the way, but it's really excellent. I've helped so many kids over the years to get rid of anxiety, even those who have developed depression as a result of their anxiety getting in their way. It's all possible. And there's no medications required, as I said, and it is done for good. I've been doing this work since 2002, so I have a pretty long record of success, if I do say so myself. Now, depression. You understand if your child is depressed, if they stop doing the things that they once enjoyed doing, if they're sleeping too much, or they're dealing with insomnia, they're eating a lot more than they used to, or they're not eating anything at all. Also, they seem to be irritable. Now, sometimes what will happen is if they're feeling really angry, this happens with the males more than the females, but females can do this as well. They'll blame the world for the problems. They will not take any responsibility for things going on, and they'll just be really, really hard to deal with, getting into angry, rageful moods. Not fun to be around, but it is depression nonetheless. And again, I've worked with quite a few of these particular types of clients over the years as well, and I have a really good success record. But this is the thing. I work really hard to work with parents who are willing to actually help their children to overcome these problems, that are willing to take responsibility if the kid has taken something in that maybe the parent did without really realizing it, especially if the kid was really young at the time and just help them to work through these things. Because the reality of the situation is when a kid is really young, they can't reason, they can't rationalize, they cannot judge anything from another person's perspective. Their prefrontal cortex is not yet developed. So even if they look like they're a teenager or they're college age, if these things happen when they're really young, it's going to be in their subconscious mind at that younger stage in life. So we have to understand this when we're doing the healing work. And inner child work is certainly a big part of the work that I do with my kid clients as well as the adults actually who are having these issues. So if we consider that 20% of the kids now have 
mental health issues. And if we consider the fact that only 20% of them are getting mental health because there's such a huge demand on mental health workers, and there's not enough psychiatric mental health workers in any stretch of the imagination, and hasn't been for ages, you might have called to get help from somebody and you've been put on a wait list forever and ever. Not good for your kid, especially if they're suffering from depression. Depression is a progressive illness and can actually get to the point where you can end up losing your kid. Don't like to speak in those terms, but 20% of depressives will end up dying, committing suicide. Those are the stats, folks. So let's be realistic about it. Now, if you have a kid that has manic depression, bipolar, it's 15%. And usually what happens is they'll get into drugs in order to self-medicate their highs and lows to even out the moods. Not all of them, but many of them, like 85%. And that's a whole nother issue on top of the actual bipolar. If the person has bipolar one where they're having psychotic features, I can't help them. That's beyond my realm of expertise. They really do need psychiatric intervention to help with the psychotic features. That's just the reality of the situation. Same thing with schizophrenics, you know, the psychotic events. And also personality disorders, I can't do anything to help individuals with these issues as well. As for the rest, we've had some really, really great results over the many years I've been doing this. I had one kid who came in whose father was really sick of him pulling out his eyelashes. He looked really strange. And we were able to stop it in a session. He comes back for a second session. His dad said, you know, he won't let his little sister go into his bedroom and it's making us kind of nuts. We don't know why that's a problem. So we let go of that in the second session. So two sessions and the kid was done. I have to admit that these sessions are about two and a half hours each, but nonetheless, it was only two sessions. So we don't have to think of this taking the rest of the kids' lives. In fact, I had psychiatric nurses bring their kids in to see me, not wanting to put them on medications. In one case, her son was not taking the medication. She was finding them all over the house as he was tossing them into the couch and wherever. So she brought him in for treatment and it was pretty quick and easy to help him to overcome his issues because the kids are already naturally in hypnosis. So we're just using a natural state to help them to clear their problems. It's rather beautiful, it's fast, it's effective. So it's good enough for psychiatric nurses. Maybe it's good enough for your kids, who knows. In any case, the prices will vary depending on the problems that the kids are having. Anywhere from $500 to do a simple clearing of something easy, like an OCD problem, up to a few to several thousand dollars, depending on if we're dealing with eating disorders and very complicated matters of that fact. So it really depends on the problems your kid has. However, I can promise you that if the kid does what we need them to do, and if you're supportive of what we're doing here, they will be able to release these issues because I've done it over and over and over again in this practice over the last, well, really 17 years with eating disorders. I also had a father call with a 16-year-old daughter who was actually sexting photos of herself to strangers and bringing them into the house. This is a big problem, especially for the mom. Needs to stop. Well, we don't know what our kids are doing these days in order to get the attention that they didn't feel they received when they were younger. And again, it doesn't matter what you think. It matters how they coded it in their subconscious mind when they were really, really young and couldn't understand your perspective. So... These are the things that happen. These are the things that I work with. And these are the things that you need to be looking out for in your kids today. Because seriously, if we don't help our kids while they're young and easy to help out, it's going to be a much bigger problem as they become adults and they're not functional. Or they're doing things they ought not be doing and getting into trouble both legally and medically speaking because of these problems. I trust you found that. This video is rather informative, and as always, I thank you for spending your time with me. Till next time, be well. Bye-bye.